Okay, here we are on a lovely snowy day just outside of New York, getting ready for another Clark auction. This sale will be on this Sunday, starting at 12 p.m. Hail, rain, shine, snow, or wild horses, we will be running, so be there, be square. You can, if you're scared to come out in the snow, if it snows, you can bid online at liveauctioneers.com or bidsquare.com. Anyway, with that, I'm gonna run swiftly through a few items in this large medley of stuff that we have here. Uh, we're loaded again. We're gonna start off with this, which is actually vintage. There's a lot of reproductions around lately, but this one's extra large, nice with the black glass and the beautiful etching, probably from the 30s, Venetian style mirror. Missing a couple of little rosettes down here, but beautiful, beautiful size and different with the black on it. While we're in the mirror vein, let's have a look at this. This is a Persian mixed metal or steel and brass table mirror. It looks like a sunburst opens up into a mirror. Let's have a look at the bottom. It's beautifully, beautifully etched. Very decorative. Has some age, probably early 20th century. This came from a uh, Southampton in Long Island estate out in the Hamptons where we were out stretching our long reach to gather items last week or two weeks ago. Moving along before we go into the back room, Steve, here are two sculptures. These are by a Californian artist now in New York by the name of Bill Barrett. Beautiful abstract bronzes, nicely patinated. These three of these bronzes, two this size, which are table size, and one larger one came from a Marmarnik estate. A doctor, I believe, <coughs> a friend of the artist. He's still living and a very important second generation uh, sculptor in bronze. He's also a painter. Anyway, before we move in, we have the Steinway. I'm sure Mrs. Lieberman will be into play it as she is every sale. Has nice sound, nice board, beautiful size. This came from a New York City estate. In good shape, seems to sound pretty well, but Mrs. Lieberman will give us the final say when she comes in over the weekend. Moving into the main room, as you can see, we are loaded again. I'm gonna start here with this. One of the, my favorite items in the sale is this palace size Chinese nickel style carpet. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful pile. Doesn't have some little wear around the edges, but wonderful colors, nice, bright, vibrant colors. There's a little hole over here. I don't think it was a cat or a mouse, but probably for a radiator at one stage, but an easy repair, but just unusual to find such a wonderful carpet of this size. And in this, back to Bill Barrett again, look at the size of this one. This was outside in the Mamaronek estate. Nice size, this is Bill Barrett. All these sculptures are dated, I believe, in the 90s. Nice patinated, beautiful piece. Just what's in it this time, the mid-century sculpture type stuff. Moving right along, as you see, we've got lots of antiques. We've got lots of mid-century, Keane and Neely and Bruce will get into all of these items. Lots of Victorian, lots more carpets. And the used furniture, we have George Smith. We have some nice upholstered stuff, but a really nice piece. I know they love these over in Ireland and England, probably because you can lie down well on them. Is this Chesterfield style, beautiful leather, nearly like a racing green color on that armchair. I gotta drag you back over here, Steve. You can see there's plenty of antiques, used furniture, refractory table. We've got a secretaire on Abitant here, came from Southampton. Over here, we have a very nice mirror. Italian probably with the mother of pearl and ebony inlays on it. Nicely beveled, carved. Might originally have sat atop something. But just beautiful mirror. As you can see on the walls, there's lots of art. Moving right along also from Southampton is these newer but beautiful heavyweight metal, gilt metal uh, hurricane chandeliers. It's nice to have a pair. We have a wonderful pair of bronze patinated figural sconces here. They're a bit high up, Nan has them well hidden up there for the customers, but it looks like uh, maybe dolphins. A pair of gilt wood sconces, gilt wood and gesso ones up here. And for the good old antiques, used to be popular, nice 19th century Georgian style secretary bookcase. And here from a large amount of state, we have a wonderful set of 12 Louis XV1 style chairs. White painted, but beautifully, beautifully carved. I believe we have eight sides and four arm. These originally came from Sotheby's, I believe about eight or 10 years ago, and they were part of the Yule Brynner estate. We have lots of nice little cabinet vases, uh, galley, dome, loaths probably. We have this nice carved little triptych here, Elizabethan style. And we have a beautiful Picasso Madura jug, just to follow with the one we had one in the last sale that did very well. This is nice, the fish. 
to the marking on the back of it. And with that, Steve, I'm going to hand you over to Bruce, who will give you a more detailed description. And with that, thank you. Hope to see you on Sunday at 12 p.m. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Here we are with another sale. We've beat the bushes pretty hard for a nice group of stuff. A matched pair of these antique Chinese hardwood chairs with a beautiful marble back, sort of meditation marble, I guess they call them. Really popular with our Chinese customers. And here out of a local house, I think it was Yonkers, is a really early, I think really early, Southeast Asian head of Buddha. And you can see here, it's got some old overpaint, but you probably can't see right here some beautiful quality original gilding. So this stone head was gilded at, the top knot's broken off, but it's really a beautiful early artifact. All this sort of lime stuff comes off with a pocket knife and you get the beautiful original surface. So somebody painted it black at some point uh, and it's easy enough to flake it right off. From a house in White Plains is really a terrific early 19th century, late 18th, early 19th century Italian marquetry commode. Whether it's Magellini or not, I wouldn't want to say, but it's as good as Magellini. It needs some cabinet work, some veneer work, but this beautiful sort of globe contrasting inlays is, I think, as nice as you're gonna find. The market's sort of changed on this kind of furniture, but this should rise to the top, I hope. And here, Steve, out of a private home in Westchester, it's going to be hard for you to see the whole thing, is a four-panel screen. I, it's 17th century, and surely it's French. Um, maybe they were bed hangings, but it's, a, it's been made into a screen sometime in the 30s or 40s, as was the fashion. But beautiful fragments of 17th century tapestry. And from the house in White Plains, where that commode came from. Probably French, but it could be Italian also. It's this little continental sort of tambour desk. And it, unfortunately, I can't get the door open all the way, but it's got a beautiful fitted interior and these faux leather uh, tambour front door. It does shut. It's gonna also need some work, but a nice little piece of furniture. Here's a beautiful, good sized 19th century white marble and bronze, original bronze, classical woman sitting on top. I think it's Tiffany and Company. These are uh, probably Sev's plaques. Anyway, nice item. We have got a lot of stuff from two houses in White Plains this sale. From the same house, a pair of Japanese, signed Japanese bronze bookends. A nice little Meissen figure in a group of three items. And here from the same house in White Plains is as nice an onyx and bronze inkwell set as you're going to see with a man on horseback. Maybe he's carrying something there and it comes with, comes with all these original accessories. A set of four unsigned but surely Baccarat, as good a newel post as you're going to find. Uh, this is at least 17th century. It's got a bite out of it here but a beautiful polychrome wood carving. And here's a little French silvered bronze on a malachite base of a leaning soldier. It's signed and you can get all the details and measurements on our website. Here's a pretty rare item. This is a pair. I left the other one in a showcase. They're a pair of 19th century hurricane lamps. Probably English, maybe Irish, but definitely made for the Persian market. Here's the Persian coat of arms and certainly the first half of the 19th century really a pretty rare item. From a house in Larchmont, we got quite a few Chinese things. And here's a beautiful little hardwood table screen with a porcelain plaque. And we took the back off and you can see photos on our website, but it's got that nice orange peel surface on it. And Ron got this out of a house in Yonkers, I think. And it's part of a, a, a box lot or a group lot, but this is gonna be the star in the lot. Uh, Chinese or Southeast Asian, but a good early bronze head of Buddha. Uh, and I think terrific age. And here from a storage unit, a guy got a good storage unit and brought us a lot of Chinese things. This is definitely Shushan stone. I hope I said that right. And it's deeply and beautifully carved, these crabs and this sort of 
aquatic leaves. And look at the frame with the stacked coin and the bats in the corner, the original frame. And you can see the color of the stone on the back. It was really filthy. I had to wash it with soap and water to even see what it was. And here from a house just less than a mile from here in Larchmont is a beautiful little silver box, hard stone mounted, but with a very thick and nice piece of uh, quality antique jade inset into the top. Just marked silver. It's got these nice little enamel cabochons and hard stones. And here just a lot of four. These are probably Republic, but these are usually pretty popular with our buyers, these little bonsai planters. And they come with a pair of cloisonne or enameled bonsais. And this is from our storage unit, and I didn't even bring the whole lot over here. Uh, there's a couple other things on the shelf. You can see it's lot 358. But this is one that they're all asking about. This is going to be a good early Chinese rank badge. And then it has all these other wonderful little Chinese soapstone things and this little puppet head that's terrific with human hair. Anyway, just an interesting lot. We're known for our interesting lots in all categories, our generous lots. I wanted to show you a pair of bisque figures. They're a little bit as is, but they're fairly rare. They were made for the London Exposition in 1862. I won't try to pronounce that without my glasses on, but a rare maker. You can see the details on our website. And on the bottom, Steve, just a nice piece. I, I don't know that it's signed, an iron-strapped piece of French Deco glass. It's, it's probably Schneider or like Schneider glass. And this case is just loaded with Chinese and Japanese stuff. All estate fresh. I almost don't know where to start. Down here, being sold are t together as one lot or two Japanese vases from my Larchmont house, a beautiful and, and good age on this hardwood Shaolu figure. And here from White Plains is just a nice lot. Three Chinese lamps, a little Peking glass bowl, but what's really nice are these sort of, they're, they're kind of faux cinnabar, but they have beautiful antique jade uh, discs and, and panels in them. You'll have to look on the website to see close-ups of them. And then on this shelf, on real, from a, a Southampton estate that Ron did, a pair of enameled and gilded bronze figures, Chinese, good age to them. Good condition here. A, a pair of Meiji mixed metals, cabinet vases, silver, gold. I think they're signed. And this is part of a box lot, but I thought it was a nice porcelain pl plaque, probably Republic period. Yeah, lot 359. It comes with everything on this tray here. And here's another pair from the same estate as the other small pair that Ron got. is a nice pair of Japanese mixed metal bronze vases. And more you can see in the back. And from our storage unit, a nice lot of Chinese enamel work, metal work. I didn't have any place else to put it. So this is actually a little French bronze. And it's of a Chinese man working on an urn, decorating an urn. So it's not Chinese, it's being sold with Chinese stuff, but he's a Chinese decorator. Anyway, that's a nice interesting lot. Here's Japanese and Chinese together. There's one big lot, two shelves of French Longwe, Ron also got in Long Island. This is a nice item. Andrew took it for walk-in Wednesday. We didn't want to say if it's the Mexican-American War, if he's an American soldier, a European soldier, or after the fact, but it's a beautifully painted porcelain plaque and a very unusual subject. And from White Plains and more decorative than useful is this fairly large Wedgwood set. There's quite a bit of damages to it, and I went into detail on the condition on our website, but it's got a terrine, an underplate, two covered terrines, another oval tray, a bunch of plates and soup plates, 
really just a beautiful sort of seaweed and coral pattern Wedgwood, probably 1850s or 60s. And one of our good items from Southampton, I forgot to tell you, Steve, is this Tonka. It's going to be hard from this angle for you to see the quality. It's a good antique one, and the quality is superb. Uh, we're getting a lot of action on this, asking for condition and more photos. It's under plexiglass. That's how it came out of the apartment. And here, Ron got this pair of Japanese, really extraordinary uh, silk, silk work panels in the shape of, of fans, stacked sort of fans. So we have a nice selection of antique and semi-antique carpets. Ron already showed you the big nickel style carpet that's pretty hard to come by. And he also got this carpet. I'm not sure if it's a Tabriz or what it is, and it's probably 40s, 50s, or 60s, but it's such beautiful quality and condition. If you look at that sort of center medallion, anyway, it's a really fine carpet. And over here from my house in Larchmont is some kind of a Saruk. Uh, it's gonna be some special Saruk, I'm not sure. I'll show you a couple of other Saruks out of this house. This is not a pattern that I'm familiar with, but a real good quality, maybe 40s, Saruk, and out of the same house, and almost never found, is a matched pair. I forgot to show you the one in the front entrance, but that's a matched pair of either Farahan Saruks or Johosen, Johosen Saruks. Uh, really just the finest quality Saruk that you can find, scatter size, and perfect condition. You'll look on our website. And another carpet of note, Steve, is this oversized Kerman. And again, it's in fantastic condition. The guy that brought it in, it was his grandfather's. It was in Mount Vernon. It was rolled up in the attic. Never been for sale. Could probably use a cleaning, but there's no damage. No stains. Nothing significant that I'm aware of anyway. And over here from Larchmont, is another nickel style carpet. Unfortunately, when we pulled it out from under the bed, it had a bit of, I guess, sun fading. I don't know if it'll wash out, but it's a beautiful deco carpet with these peacocks on the border. And you can see how beautiful this border is. It's just the colors changed a little bit in the middle and on that end. This end was under the bed. And we have other rugs that you can see on our website, a, a good collection of antique and semi-antique, as I mentioned earlier. And I forgot to show you this a few minutes ago. I don't know if it's an un unfinished robe, but it's a beautiful vintage, maybe only 50s or 60s, but a beautiful vintage Chinese embroidery, certainly in the shape of a robe, and I think it's probably an uncut robe. Probably not the biggest value of things that we sell, but you're not gonna find a better one. A good steel US mail plane, all original color and condition, little decals and everything, as nice as you're gonna find. A nice pair of antique Chinese kind of scholars chairs. They sort of have that orangey look and it sort of looks like elm, but I don't think it is elm. We'll let the buyers decide, but I think it might be a little better than that. Nice antique Japanese jardinier comes with an umbrella stand. You really can't see the scale on the internet. We should have used something for scale. And again, they're probably 1960s, but extraordinary quality Chinese silk embroideries in, in extraordinary condition, a matched pair, so they are, must be five or six feet high. I hope you can see that work, Steve. We did take beautiful photos on the internet, but people should have bid on these right away. Here's one piece from the guy that got the storage unit. It's a good antique hardwood Chinese etagere, and we just got the rest of the gallery today. I didn't even know that it had animals in the back of it. Our earlier photo, photo showed it without the gallery. So it's gonna have a little loss here, but basically it's, it's in fairly good condition and nice color. So with that, Steve, I'm gonna end my segment and turn it over to Neely and we hope to see you on Sunday.
Thank you, Bruce. I'm gonna start by showing you some of the contemporary and modern works in the sale. The first is this very large acrylic on canvas by Stanley William Hayter, a British-born painter uh, who was very much influenced by the Surrealists in the 1930s and 40s, um, and a very graphic artist, worked with textures, line, and form, uh, was uh, into automatic drawing and painting, really revitalized printmaking in the 20th century. So here we have a work from 1986. It's an untitled piece, um, but you can see the wonderful abstraction colors and form in this work. This came out, out of an East 65th Street New York apartment and is estimated at six to 9,000. We have another smaller work by the artist, which I'll show you in just a moment. Now let's move on to another 20th century painter. This one here is by Michael Delacroix. He's a French artist, uh, known for his Parisian street scenes, kind of in a naive or primitive form. Um, his prints are readily available and very commercialized, but very few of his original oils do come to market. Um, I love here the chocolate truck in, in front of the shops here, many figures, a, a lot of small details in this work. This was purchased in the 1980s from the Lublin Gallery in Connecticut by the consigner for I believe over 20, maybe $25,000. This is offered with an eight to $12,000 estimate. From the same 65th Street estate comes this large abstract work by Paul Jenkins. Jenkins, of course, known for his somewhat chance paintings. Um, this one called Phenomena Broadway Prism at 42nd Street. Uh, what I love about this is yes, we do have the, the unintentionally dripped paint here, uh, but mixed with this sort of stenciled out prism. So it's a mix of his chance painting uh, with a little bit of intention, which is unusual for Jenkins. This piece is offered with a $15,000 to $25,000 estimate. It is signed in the lower left corner and again on the verso. Then I want to show you um, another Jenkins. This is a watercolor here. This one here is called Phenomena Royal House, New York. So beautiful watercolor, wonderful colors here. You can see the flow and the rhythms and the paint. Um, as they drip across the sheet. Again, signature down here and a label on the reverse. This is estimated at three to 5,000. And just above it, we have another uh, Stanley William Hayter. This is a smaller painting called Curtain from 1979. You can see the difference of the work uh, from the 70s to the uh, painting I showed you earlier from the 1980s. This uh, offered with a low two to $3,000 estimate. Here we have a landscape by Jane Freilicher, done in 1953. Freilicher was very much influenced by the Expressionists um, and the painters around her. And here we do have an Expressionist painting, but it's a landscape painting, so an almost um, Impressionist style. This is possibly her home in Watermill, Long Island. Uh, she did summer there from the 1950s on, so we do believe it's her house or garden. Beautiful use of light. Uh, love the lush green landscape that's depicted here. This is offered with a six to $9,000 estimate and comes from the estate of theatrical figure and friend of the artist, Larry Rivers. To my left and to my right are two large works by Lowell Nesbitt. Nesbitt, of course, known for his very realist paintings of flowers, although here we have electric tulips. Uh, these were done in 1980 and sold as a pair at Sotheby's in the 80s, uh, where they were purchased by the consigner. So these done in a much more psychedelic manner um, with this sort of rhythmic forms that follow the lines of the flowers. The pair are offered with a two to $4,000 auction estimate. From a local home in Westchester comes this work by Jean Lambert Rucchi. And Lambert Rucchi was sort of known for his surrealist and almost cubist uh, paintings. This one here, we have a very primitive figure, almost looks like a cave painting done with a very stippled brush stroke. This is from 1948, signed down here and also on the back offered with a $1,000 to $1,500 estimate. I want to show you this, this small oil on canvas by Charles Burning House. This work here is done in an impressionist manner and the title is Sage Bush Valley and it's a, I believe a New Mexican painting. Uh, he was known for his paintings of New Mexico, Mexico and, and the Southwest. Uh, this is done in a wonderful impressionist manner. Uh, you can see the mountains depicted in the background. Just a really nice uh, quality to this work. This is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500 and comes from a local Mamaroneck, New York home. The consigner uh, did work for MoMA at one point, so had a nice collection of pieces. A couple of weeks ago on one of our walk and appraisal days, we had two paintings consigned by Ludolf Liberts. This is one of them. This is the Parisian Boulevard scene, kind of done from an aerial view. We have 
a nice impressionist depiction of figures along the boulevard in Paris. Uh, a little bit dirty, a little bit yellow, but a beautiful painting. Um, he is known for these types of, of scenes, uh, probably done in the 1930s when he was working in Paris and traveled throughout Europe. This is offered with a six to $9,000 estimate. I'll show you the other one in just a moment. We've sold several works by the 19th century Italian painter Federico Andriotti, and here we have an oil on board by Andriotti, though it's unusual in subject matter. Uh, usually we see kind of romance, romantical scenes uh, with figures and courting couples in an interior, usually in a tavern, uh, but here we have a, a woman seated plucking a chicken. Uh, but it's a beautifully rendered piece. You can see wonderful texture in the feathers here, in the softness in her face. This is a wonderful painting. This is estimated at three to 5,000 and comes from a home in Westport, Connecticut. As we move along, I just want to show you quickly the other Ludolf Liberts. And here we have San Marco Piazza in Venice. So also done in that kind of aerial view of the plaza, many figures in a, in a very heavy impasto. This also estimated at six to 9,000. And then from the same home in Greenwich, Connecticut as the Andriotti comes this work by Jan Everson. Everson was a 20th century Dutch artist, but very much painted in the 17th century manner, which we can see here. Uh, here we have the decanter with wine, the wonderful texture in the tapestry or rug that's seated on the table, contrasting with that sleek shine off the uh, pewter pieces. This is estimated at two to $3,000. Before I wrap up, I want to show you a series of 20th century modern prints. The first are a set of three Japanese pieces. These are all by Hiroshi Yoshida, and they depict sailing boats. We have morning, afternoon, and night. And these are from a set of six. So we have three of the six. Each one is signed in pencil uh, and also with uh, the calligraphy along the left hand side of the margin. Beautiful impressions. Colors are still very nice and vivid. Maybe some minor toning. Each one is offered with a $1,000 to $1,500 estimate. They come from a home in Long Island. From the same Ameranek New York home as the Charles Burning House that I showed you comes this Matisse lithograph. This is ink initialed and numbered 38 out of 50 in the lower right corner. And it's a very nice impression. We do have actually a MoMA label with inventory number on the back. As I mentioned previously, con the consigner did work for the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, this, I believe, was executed in 1913. It is an original lithograph in good condition. This is estimated at two to 3,000. And down below, we have another modern piece. This is by Zhao Waqi, a very, very well-known um, abstract Chinese artist. We have a signature down in the corner. This is dated 1964. It is from a low edition of 25, I believe. I'm sorry, 85, excuse me. Um, an etching in aqua tint, nice colors here. We have not had this out of the frame, but I believe in pretty good con condition. This comes from the same home as the Jenkins and the Haters that I showed you in the front room. So we'll wrap it up with that. Please take a look at our website. There are many more pieces for you to check out. And here is Keen with the Mid-Century. Thank you. Thank you, Nelia. Great Mid-Century selection for February 8th, starting with this super comfortable, as I was just demonstrating, and early Eames chair. This one has the lighter tan or brown, light brown leather cushions, which is a nice find, not what you see usually. And it is in great condition in terms of leather. There is some sun fading to the rosewood, but a caveat to that is that the sun fading is pretty equal overall. The entire frame has the same amount of fading, so there's not a spotty surface area to it. It's really a nice look to it, and obviously can be stained or polished back to its original finish. Few other pieces, as you can see, I'm sure they might have been mentioned, but these are really heavy in a mid-century Asian modern Asian inspired pair of chairs, also a day bed right there. Some more Danish pieces I can show you. This is a really nice um, dining room set, the woven leather seats, and this table has a nice oblong shape to it. A little bit of staining to the top, I think it easily be taken care of, but the finish is still in pretty good condition. A nice accent crossbar with the brass here. Very elegant looking table, very lightweight. Although the weight is actually pretty substantial, it's a very light looking table. 
Another pretty unique set of chairs is the Harvey Prober chairs. There's also an old chair that is based off the same sort of design, but these have the nice chrome space age bases to them with the nice comfortable leather overstuffed cushions on the top. Very comfortable chairs, very nice mix of comfort and elegance, uh, very modern look to them. Right here is a Fernet set. Obviously noticeable as the Paul Macab style, but Fernet was known for making very similar pieces during the same period. Nice two drawer, the full facade of the four drawer in the front here, nice brass accents. Great piece, great retro look, and something that is not quite as expensive as a Paul Macab, but still has that perfect Macab look to fill any design that you're looking for. Gonna move on here, also unidentified, but nice leather again, keeping with that leather motif. Comfortable cushions, obviously some wear, kind of adds to that vintage look, but a very nice set of four. These have more of an industrial quality. I really like these pieces. They will be sold as a set of six, sorry, not four, six. And they really go well with a more sleek table like the one you see here, which will be sold separately. This one has the Lucite legs. Uh, but anything with chrome legs that kind of match these industrial frames will really complement the chairs so you could use them in a variety of dining sets. Here's another chrome and very nice rosewood veneer. More modern, more contemporary desk. You can see it has the file folder hangers here, but it has a great streamlined look to the side with that George Nelson style heavy chrome leg with the rosewood veneer on top. Here, going back to a vintage look, these are beautiful, beautiful chairs. This is not the greatest color that you would see, not a very contemporary color, but these, this fabric is de definitely exemplary of the time period, and I think that these are just really great chairs. I mean, the, the dull and the bright orange with the dark green, is not the most attractive at first look, but I think they really grow on you as they did for me. In terms of design, we have a lot of lighting as well. This is just one example, a frayed piece, obviously needs to be rewired, but this is a pretty rare Simon Henningsen Tivoli light fixture, the two shades. These have the super sharp looking chrome exterior with the painted interior. What's really nice about this, when illuminated, the interior paint, which is a matte finish on the interior, reflects off the outside, the exterior chrome, and it has a really nice play of light, of color, really nice simple construction, very nice light fixture there. More Asian modern, these are not designer, but they are, in my opinion, some nice modern style chairs. They have a very low profile, a nice sleek back to them and they would be a, probably be a steal for someone looking for a similar style chair. I mean, these are just great, very comfortable as well. Just another example of the many forms of mid-century and mid-century style seating that we have. I'll take you into the back, Steve, where we have a few other pieces, including a nice dark finish Paul Frankel bedroom set, a nice long chest and two drop front end tables, the end tables are very nice. You can see up here, I will mention that there is some finish losses. These are not chips, uh, but just a finish loss. So these are actually in really good condition, minus the small discolorations and the finish losses. But usually these things, uh, as we've seen, are pretty beat up, but these ones are in nice condition structurally. Here we have another recognizable mid-century piece, George Nelson. And associates, an action desk. It has the tambour roll top top. This one's unmarked, but it has really clean chrome legs. The drawers has the original key, so you can lock the side of it. Just a simple and functional George Nelson desk. Something that we've seen before, but something I really like and should do pretty well. If a DIY mentality is what you're after, this chair definitely has it for you. There is no cushions on this chair, 
but it is an Adrian Pearsall chair frame and it's in really good condition. You can really make it your own. Uh, it will be sold by itself at a pretty modest estimate, so something to look out for. Could be a sleeper. Right here we have a nice Example, this is one of a pair that we have in the sales who'll be sold in one lot. A rare Warren MacArthur pair of drop leaf tables. This one has a very rare base, one that you don't see. It's called a hockey puck base. And 10 years ago, this was worth much, much more than it is now. Maybe the market will take an uptick. Maybe you could get a steal and hold on to it for a little bit. But nice functional tables. Uh, kind of on the outskirts of the mid-century category, but Warren MacArthur, obviously a known maker, and these are a rare example of two of his tables. We have two as well, another addition to the rarity factor. So that's another piece to look out for. I'll finish off here with our featured lot, my favorite lot in the sale, in my section at least, is a Paul Evans Burl patchwork and brass shelving unit credenza. This is a really beautiful piece. It's unsigned, but in obvious Paul Evans fashion, it has the beautiful cityscape burl patchwork, these very streamlined burl, um, brass shelves, nice smoke glass shelves on top of that that easily are removable. And Seen etagers in the style of one bay, maybe two bays, a three bay system is pretty rare and a nice large piece that doesn't create too an intrusive of a unit, but it's just typical Paul Evans and a very nice piece that's outside of his brutalist work. Something I think will do very well because of where the market is for Paul Evans, but also because it's a very unique and beautiful piece of mid-century design. With that, I'll wrap it up. I'll send you over to Whitney, who will show you all the sterling and the jewelry, and I'll see you on February 8th. Thank you. Thank you, Keen. And starting our jewelry selection, we have this 18 karat yellow gold and ruby foliate form brooch. And from a local Westchester estate, we have this beautiful jade 18 karat and sterling brooch. If you look here, it is engraved with a fish form design into the jade, a really nice inlaid with sapphires. And one of our ladies' watches in this auction is this beautiful platinum diamond, platinum and diamond ladies Hamilton watch. A nice deco piece in this auction. And moving into our selection of rings, we have this beautiful 14 karat yellow gold blue enamel and pearl Hungarian ring. Came in on one of our walk-in appraisal days. And moving on to two of our deco rings here, both circa the 1920s. We have this blue sapphire and diamond ring and this pink, sapphire, ruby, and diamond ring, both set in platinum and both accompanied by appraisals on both of these rings. And one of our key items in this February 8th sale is this Cartier diamond solitaire ring. It is set in 14 karat yellow gold and the diamond is approximately HI in color with VS2 clarity and weighs about 1.15 carats total weight. It is a beautiful Cartier piece in this sale. And from the same Nyack estate as our two deco rings, we have this white gold and emerald ring. By consigner information, these are natural Colombian emeralds. A very nice piece, estimated at six to 900. And from a local Westchester estate, we have this Peridot garnet and diamond little ring here, set in 14 karat yellow gold. And starting our men's selection of wristwatches for this auction, we have this Breitling 18 karat yellow gold watch. And moving on to this Tiffany retailed Matthew Tissot Movement men's wristwatch, set in 14 karat yellow gold. And a beautiful men's deco watch in this auction, we have this Waltham 14 karat white gold watch. All from the same estate, all estate fresh pieces. And moving on to silver, we have a beautiful Tiffany & Company Wave Edge flatware service. It is a partial service missing the dinner knives. And one of my favorite pieces in this auction is this pair of German candelabras. They are by the German silversmith Gottlieb Kruz, who began his career in 1895. These are around the early 20th century, 1920. Nice deco pieces with carved finials. Out of a Manhattan estate, estimated at six to 900. And another Tiffany flatware set in this auction. It is a service for eight. And this is the Tiffany flatware pattern century and it was designed in 1937 to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Tiffany & Company. A really beautiful set in the sale, estimated at 2,000 to 2,500. 
Here we have another pair of candlesticks, Portuguese sterling, really beautiful craftsmanship here, a nice pair of candlesticks estimated at four to 600. And moving on to a Danish piece in the sale, we have this grouping of hollowware and flatware. This is a Peterson sterling salad set accompanied with this core, C-O-H-R, creamer and sugar. And here we have a partial service of a George Jensen flatware set. This is the Caravelle pattern. Beautiful design, estimated at four to 600. A Judaica lot in this auction are the, this, these two spice boxes. A nice bird finial. This is a house form spice box with a little man playing an instrument. A little sweet lot here of Judaica sterling. And last but not least, we have this Tiffany & Company cocktail shaker. Really nice design. It is monogrammed and unfortunately accompanied by a silver plate lid that is not original to the piece, but this is estimated at four to 600. And that wraps it up for the sterling and jewelry in this auction, and we hope to see you on February 8th. Thank you.